MJ joins us today for uh, Pro-Am Sports, where all I have to tell you is it's flag season. Time to let them fly, right? You got It is time to put the car flag up. Usually they say when they clinch, throw the car flag up. You go check it out at ProAmSports.ca right now. I think they got a couple different styles of car flags for you. Might not get two different ones. Have a choice, yeah. Throw them up on both sides, right? Options, go like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. ProAmSports.ca is where you can find that. MJ, good morning. How you doing, sir? You're bringing back bad memories for me. Uh-oh. Because I remember when I first was like traded away from Toronto and I lived in Toronto and I was, the Toronto was very good back then and they made, make it to the semifinals. And, you know, part of me is thinking, I'm going to be the piece they traded away to win the Stanley Cup, which would be very un, <laughs> unsettling when I lived there. <laughs> and so the bane of my existence was when I returned home from wherever, Tampa or Arizona, wherever I was playing, and those bloody flags. <laughs> Those flags were on all the cars, and I'm like, oh, God, I've been living in my neighborhood, and every one of my neighbors proudly sporting their Leaf flags, like every little little dig every time I drove by them. So, yes, bad memories with the flags. Are you telling me that car flags weren't big in Arizona and Tampa Bay to support their NHL teams? <laughs> okay, here's my best Tampa story, okay? So I get traded down there from Toronto. Obviously, you're not in Kansas anymore. It's about as different yeah. as you can be. This is not Tampa like Tampa is now. This is Tampa when we were the Frightening. Not the lightning, we're the frightening. <laughs> the frightening. <laughs> so I go to the Publix local grocery store. My first night there or the next day, and I'm buying some groceries for my little whatever apartment. And I check out, and it's $100 in groceries, whatever it is. And they're like, oh, um, here's your tickets. I'm like, I don't I don't need any tickets. Like, oh, yeah, anyone who spends more than $50 gets two tickets to the lightning game. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm coming from Toronto where like you're on a waiting list for 20 years to try yeah. to get a ticket. You're giving them out with a bag of milk? What are we doing here? It was like, oh, my God. And be, I was so naive to the NHL. I thought every market was like Toronto. Every market was yeah. like Edmonton. I thought they all were sort of passionate and into it. I'm like, oh, this is not the same at all. So – um yeah that the tampa was no flags weird grocery stores and yeah a very different existence than toronto you spend over 50 dollars and get two tickets, Wait, they get two tickets. Right, that's wild to must me, have been man. lower lower bowl yeah and parking yeah, and yeah. parking yeah, that's yeah. uh there was a special popcorn, special item yeah a beer you, and yeah. a hot dog and the whole bit absolutely <laughs> that's uh that's insane uh all right the edmonton oilers um roll over the san jose sharks last night we were kind of throwing around this morning it was it was a great night i mean it was a point night holloway at three points Vogel with a couple goals connor obviously returns scores gets his 100th assist um so what like with having that type of game against the roster that san jose rolled out last night what can what what can the like the team feels good about it because they roll? But can you take anything away from that type of game, Mike? No, because the games you're about to play, yeah, and the teams you're going to face, it will be like a different sport. Like that last night was almost, you know, it's pro sports. We don't feel bad for anyone. I almost you feel bad for the, some of the Sharks players and the you know Devin Cooley and Nett. You're like this is this is almost unfair. Now, yeah. Edmonton didn't do anything wrong. They're just playing the way they should. So what the Edmonton could take out of it, sort of the the confidence that you naturally will feel with success. You don't care if you scored against San Jose or you scored against Boston. Like goals are goals, and they always feel good, especially for guys who don't score them all the time. So you know you you do take a bit more confidence from having success that way. But so, you know to think we're rolling now, or these lines are locked in, or we play like that, we're good to go. Like I think even. The, the most optimistic Oiler player family, like, hang on, we can't put too much into that game. It was lopsided, but it was almost perfect in the sense where Connor got back. He was flying around. My goodness, he looked yeah. great. And he got his 100th assist. And even on the goal he scored, you know he was trying to pass it anyway. So he was, he was trying to find back doors regardless. And now you can do whatever you want. Like, I know they're still maybe playing for first. I think Vancouver probably gets it done tonight, but whatever. Like, if Connor needs more time, He's got that record. He looked great. He looked sharp. You can do whatever you want with your roster now, rest, whatever you want to do. Um, so in that sense, it was a good kind of freebie night against a very inferior opponent. And I think, Mike, one guy that could probably use it too and who's been growing in confidence over the last little while is Dylan Holloway, uh, a goal his first career three-point night. Uh, I know Dusty was mentioning it, posed the question earlier, but if you're calling the shots here, if you're Chris Knobloch, where is he game one uh, of the Stanley Cup playoffs for the Edmonton Oilers? Oh boy, oh boy. I mean, are we assuming Evander Kane is healthy? Well, that yeah, that's the thing. Like, if Evander Kane's right? healthy, you've got Henrique, Nuge, and Kane on the left side. You're not going to throw yeah. Holloway in the middle. I 
That's right. I know a lot of people are making the play right now. You play him on the fourth line instead of Matthias Janmark. I just don't think I just don't think Knobloch would do that to start the playoffs. Yeah, is Janmark kill penalties? Like is yeah, he a versatile yeah, yeah, guy, a little yeah. more a little more heft to his game, and like and this is what this this is way coaches overthink. Like over eighty two games, absolutely, you put Holloway over Janmark on the fourth line, and you'll be better for it. But in the playoffs, where the fourth line might only get seven minutes of five on five time. Like you need sort of situational. Carrick, take face offs, defensive zone stuff, whatever it might be, penalty kill. Yanmark, penalty kill. Connor Brown's played, you know, much, much better and a little yeah. bit more productive the last six weeks. You know, a month ago, Connor Brown would have got pulled, obviously. But you know, he's gone better and he's also an experienced player and he's also had some success in big moments. So I think what you have is a nice injection of youth and pace and confidence waiting in the wings if injury or performance dictate. But, um, yeah, in a playoff series, I would imagine, and who knows, like it might be Vegas, might be Still LA, know, yeah. pretty physical, yeah. defensive, mature teams. Um, so, yeah, he probably does, unfortunately, start. If everyone's healthy, if Kane's, if Kane's good to go, then he probably does start on the sidelines. But if they play two rounds, he will play games. Yeah, he'll get games. Out, he will get yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, I would, th- I would think he ends up getting some games here along the way. Connor McDavid. You know, it looked like he got it in the first minute when he threw that puck over towards Hyman, yeah. and it goes in, ends up that's a goal. And then they had eight goals, and he still didn't have an assist. And I was like, how is this possible? All the Oilers just scored eight, and he doesn't have an assist. Sets up Hyman in fitting fashion for assist 100. We knew it was coming for quite some time, but it was still a little bit of an eye-opener just diving into the box score this morning and seeing McDavid assist and then 100 in brackets next to his name. And I know Kucherov's closing in on it as well. But when he came into the league, I don't think anybody was thinking anybody at that time would be taking a run at 100 assists, man. This is nuts. 100 points. Yes. Is crazy. Let's be serious here. Like, I know we're getting carried away because Connor had 150 and Cooch has 140 this year. Like, how many guys have 100 points? Six? Like, like 100 points are hard to come by. And so, like, to get 100 assists, and I know this year he seemed far more pass focused i think some of it might have been the way he started the year where he wasn't quite healthy it looked like he wasn't shooting the puck normally he wasn't you know he had the puck a lot but he wasn't threatening to score with the puck but he was able to find and facilitate and then you know you get zach going on his goal scoring run which you know connor would want to be you know a leader of and then you get the chase for 100 um like it's so such a strange year in that when i see gretzky lemieux or mcdavid and it's like, okay, it hasn't happened in 30 something years. Yeah. That 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 offers the gravity, the enormity of of, of what he just accomplished. But then when you got Cooch on 99, you're like, ah, another guy's doing it too. It's it, it somehow doesn't ring quite as heavy, but um it's 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 incredible stuff. It's incredible stuff. I mean, he's not gonna win the art Ross. He's not going to win the heart, but he just did something that only the three greatest offensive players in the history of the game have ever done. And, and what, I think the fact that he, yeah. I was just going to say, one the of them did he, it 11 times. <laughs> yeah, now Gretz did it 11 times. tells you how much he is the greatest of all yeah. time. But, you know, I think Connor, with what he's done already and the way he's played his career, has already put himself in that group. And I think that's yeah. sort of what I take away. The 100 is the 100, and Cooch might do it, and it won't feel quite as impressive. But what it does is sort of just forces you to consider, where's Connor McDavid in the all-time – greatest offensive players ever and and it's a great conversation to have and i think you know he he won't do it as long as gordy howe and he won't score as many as ovi and he might get as many points as sid who knows the way he's going yeah but i think as far as just overwhelming offensive star he's i I don't know it feels like he's right there maybe steve eiserman's maybe right there like he's right there beyond those three guys and i think that's the fun conversation to have spurred on by this achievement what's crazy is that you know he's closing in he's got the thousand points coming up and we were talking about it last week that you know when it's all said and done if he stays healthy and plays like another eight nine years he's gonna have two thousand points like he's gonna he's gonna hit that mark if he stays healthy which is a phenomenal phenomenal talent uh you know a couple of standings questions that i want to get to we've been talking a lot here at edmonton about the edmonton Oilers. is it going to be the kings or the golden knights which one do you think they should face from the Kings and Golden Knights perspective, would you rather play Edmonton or Dallas? 
do you think? Oh, oh, ha, ha. I mean, I, I think... Vegas can skate with Edmonton. I just don't think they can. I mean, I don't know what they look like when Mark Stone's back and, you know, Hurdle's up to speed and whatever. But I almost think Vegas would say, give us Dallas, even though, you know, they are first in the in the, in the the yeah. West. They did the explosiveness. Now, the Dallas is really good. They got like, what, eight forwards with 20 goals? Yeah, they're good. Nine. They, they have so much depth on their team. So they take nothing away. And they got Ottinger and Nett who can be incredible. But I just think stylistically, if, if, if Vegas thinks they're going to sort of be physical and grind, maybe that suits them, perhaps. Whereas Edmonton can make them look a little slow. And if you're L.A., probably the opposite. I mean, L.A. play, you know, they play that 1-3-1. They're a very defensive team. They're a very good defensive team. Um, but I don't think the lack of track – I don't know. Maybe they both want Dallas because it's not like L.A.'s had great success against Edmonton in years past. So, um, you know, pick your poison. Any of those teams playing Vancouver – Playing Edmonton, playing Dallas, like they're they're all going to be a nightmare. So, um, yeah, yeah. But you forget because Dallas, or because Edmonton's record with the start of the year, like the record yeah. under Knobloch is the best. In yeah, the they're league. the best team in the league. And and the way we say that post Knobloch higher and pre Knobloch because that's yeah, they're completely different. The golf of right? the, yeah, you almost have to separate because if you take yeah. the seventy games since Knobloch's gotten there or whatever, sixty five, whatever it's been. Like, they're clearly the highest point accumulating team in the league. So, you know, they may not be first. They may not win the President's Trophy. But they played like that forever for a long, long stretch. And they went through what? Kind of a maybe a seven, eight game little blip 15 games ago where they sort of, okay, you know, they, they went to that great run. And then they're back to it again. And as long as they get goaltending. And I do think the adjustment in the way that the Oilers are playing their defense is very important to what's going on late here and what's going to happen in the playoffs. The fact of the matter that, that CC and nurse don't really play against top line opponents to the same degree they once did. They don't start in their own end. They don't get the quality of competition and they're giving it to Kulak and Dayarnay and they're giving it to Ekholm and Bouchard. And I think the Oilers are better for it. They're better for it when they play those heavier minutes, not against CC and nurse. And we've seen in the playoffs in years past, whether it was McKinnon two years ago, whether it was Eichel last year, CC Nurse did not do well against those guys. The fact that they've made that adjustment, and not just in the playoffs, they've sort of set the table, yeah. and the players kind of know what's happening and expect that rotation, doesn't mean Nurse is not important. He is. I mean, CC's not important. He is. But they're not going to be tasked with playing Eichel again or playing Kopitar, whoever, you know what I mean? I think that's a big change down the stretch that will impact Edmonton's success in the playoffs.